Hey there, in this video, we will be discussing trigonometric functions and graphs, as well as double angle formula. In part A of the question, show that 4 sine square x minus away 2 cos square x can be written as the form a plus b cos 2x, where a and b are integers. And that's a 2 marks question. In part B, you are to sketch the graph of the same equation y equals to 4 sine square x minus away 2 cos square x for the range of negative 90 degrees to 270 degrees inclusive. And that is a 3 marks question. You might want to pause this video to give this question a try and when you're ready, keep watching. involves a double angle cosine 2x as well as a single angle of x. So we might want to revise on the double angle formula. So for the double angle formula, you have cosine 2a. Cosine 2a can be expressed as a form of number 1, cos square a minus away sine square a. Cosine 2a can also be expressed in this form, 2 cos square a minus 1 as well as the last form, 1 minus 2 sine square a. So there are three formulas we can express cosine 2a converting cosine 2a into an a. We should be using one of them later on. And in part 2, we are to sketch the graph. We are to sketch the graph of y equals to 4 sine square x minus away 2 cos square x. Now in actual fact, this equation is the same as this expression. If we are able to write this expression into this form, indirectly, the question wants us to sketch a cosine curve. So now let, first, let us first begin by revising on the cosine curve. So let's revise on the default shape of a cosine curve. So we're going to sketch a y equals a cos bx plus c on the left hand side of the screen. For the range from x inclusive 0 degrees to 360 degrees. So the a cos bx plus c over here on the screen. All right, the a cos bx plus c here on the screen, the a refers to the amplitudes, the b is a coefficient of x and is related to the periods, and the c is the center. Now, let us find out the default shape of a cosine curve. For the default shape of a cosine curve, it will look something like this. So you start with the maximum, you end off with the maximum, in the middle, you go down to the minimum. In between the maximum and the minimum, it is the center here. So there are two centers as you can see here. Now we will then proceed to find out why is a cosine curve so unique in such a shape. So first, let us begin by plotting out, drawing out the x and y axis like this. So this is my x axis and my vertical y axis like this. Next, we can plot out the maximum. So the maximum point here, the first maximum we have here is known to be, is calculated to be C plus modulus of A. So the C here refers to center. The modulus of A here refers to the modulus or absolute function of the amplitude A in the general cosine equation above. Next, we have the first maximum. We can do the same for the other maximum like this. All right. And of course, in between the two maximums, all right, in the middle will be your minimum. So this is now your minimum point. Now, the minimum point can be found by having a center minus away the modulus of A. All right, center minus away modulus from A of A. So we can tell all this from the question, the equation in the question later on. So that's the formula to find the minimum point. In between the maximum and the minimum, we have a center point. So this center point over here, as well as this one refers to C. All right, so there, there are two centers like this and it refers to C. Now over here, it is worth emphasizing that this is one period. All right, one period means one cycle of a cosine curve. Now the default period for a cosine curve is actually 360 degrees, which is something that is related to your ASTC methods. Speaking of ASTC methods, we now want to draw the four quadrants in dotted lines like this. So your cosine curve, your trigonal curves, in fact, sine, cosine, and tangent is all related to the quadrant or the ASTC 
uh, thing. So in the ASTC, this part here refers to the first quadrant. So by A, we talk about all trigger functions, including this curve cosine is always a positive as shown here. The second quadrant, only sine is a positive. So this is a cosine curve. So cosine will for sure be a negative like this. And A, S, T. So this part is the T. So in this third quadrant, only tangent is a, neg it is a positive. So over here, cosine will remain to be a negative like this. And in the fourth quadrant, A, A, S, T, C. So this is the fourth quadrant. So in the fourth quadrant, cosine will return back to the positive like this. Hence, your ASTC affects your cosine curve like this. So this is a basic shape of a cosine curve. We will need this basic shape later on. Now, what happens if this is a positive cosine curve? What happens if your A is a negative? It becomes a negative cosine curve. For a negative cosine curve to happen, that means to say that instead of the usual maximum, we start with the usual maximum. Now, we start off with the minimum like this. So this is a minimum cosine curve. And this is a maximum cosine curve, a positive cosine curve, I mean. So I repeat again, so this is a positive cosine curve. And this is a negative cosine curve. So as you can see here, it's been flipping. So the default shape, we just leave it as a positive cosine curve. After which, we can then take a look at this question. In part A, we are supposed to show this expression. All right, we are supposed to show this expression. Let me just change the color and do this. So we are supposed to show this expression, which is a made up of a sine square x and a cosine square x, to be rewritten as this form of a plus b cos 2x in part a. All right, a plus b cos 2x in part a like this. So what happens for this is that, um, let's start doing our part A. So in part A, we will first start off by doing it like this. So 4 sine square x minus away 2 cos square x like this. Now it can be rewritten in the form of number 1. As you can see here, you have a sine square x, you have a cos square x. All right. So you have a sine square x, you have a cos square x. So what did I do here is, I decided to split this sine square x into two sine square x like this. So I'm going to split the sine square x into two separate trigger functions. So this four sine square x, I split it into two sine square x plus another two sine square x. And this negative two cos square x will remain in the equation. Now what happens for this is that this two sine square x, all right, this two sine square x, Actually, we can use one of the trigger functions because this is a two sine squares we can use later on. All right, so this is a two sine squares we can use later on. And this two sine squares minus away two cos square x, we can use another double angle formula, which is pertaining to this component here. So in fact, what I'm doing here is making full use of every single formula in double angle, which is basically the one in green and yellow. So how do I convert that? So to convert all this, basically, the two sine square x over here, if I'm to make two sine square x the subject, that means to say I'll have to shift this thing to the left to make it a positive. I'll end up having on the right side to be one minus away cos two x. So this is your one minus away cos two x in yellow. And for the green part, you have a two sine square x minus away two cos square x. This is as good as saying, I'm gonna multiply by a negative two. If I multiply by a negative two to here, it'll be negative two cos square x like this, if I multiply by a negative 2 to this thing, we will be having a positive 2 sine square x. That means to say, I'll need to multiply by negative 2 to here. So that will actually give us a negative 2 cos 2x. So therefore, we can merge up the negative cos 2x and the negative cos 2 cos 2x here. So let me just highlight this part here. This is found from the green color portion of the statement. So combining this um, negative 1 cos 2x and negative 2 cos 2x, will actually give us one minus away three cos two x. So one minus away three cos two x. So your a is in fact a one. It answers the question because a and b must be integers. Your b in fact is a negative three. So both a and b are integers. We just we have just converted a sine square cos square x into a double angle of cos two x like this. So that is your part a answer. Now in part b. 
you are supposed to sketch in this case. So let me just change the color. You are supposed to sketch now. Sketch the graph of this thing, this equation. And take note, the range matters because it goes into the negative x range. All right, so take note of the range like this. So what happens is I'm going, to, I'm going to start to sketch. Before we start to sketch, let us first copy down this equation. So we have a y equals to 4 sine square x minus away 2 cos square x, which is essentially the one in part A. We just have to transfer whatever we get in our part A answer into here. So it's the exact same equation like this. So now, in this equation that we have, let me just uh, shift everything up. So in this equation that we have, now we can tell that what is our center. So in this case, our center is actually this. So this is our center actually. So our center over here is a C. Okay, so our center is a C. And what is our A here? A refers to amplitudes. In this case, it's a negative 3. All right? A is a negative 3. Now take note, if A is a negative, let's recall what we went through just now. If A is a negative, it refers to a negative cosine curve. Now, a negative cosine curve will look something like this. Okay? A negative cosine curve will look something like this. So I'm just going to leave the diagram in this form so it will be easier for us to refer to later on. So we might want to first start off by labeling out the center. So in this case, let's start off by writing out the center. So center is equals to 1. So center in this case is equals to 1. And um, since A is a negative 3, if I want to find my maximum, so maximum is found by doing what? Maximum is found by having C plus modulus of A. So the C is a 1, the A is a negative 3. So 1 plus modulus of negative 3 will actually give us a 4. So let me just highlight this first. So maximum in this case we have found to be a 4. All right, maximum is found to be a 4. And what about the minimum? So the formula for minimum is very straightforward. The formula for minimum is actually C minus away modulus of A. So we take 1 minus away modulus of A, which is modulus of negative 3. So modulus of negative 3 is a 3. So you have a 1 minus 3 to give us a negative 2. So this is your minimum. All right, this is your minimum that we have. So now we have the center, max, and minimum. So as we can see here, the default periods for a cosine curve is a 360. Now take note of the original equation. This is actually your B. Your B is actually a 2. The formula for finding period is actually 360 divided by B in this case. So let me just go through this part here. So 360 divided by B. So one period, 360 divided by 2. One period of this cosine curve is actually 180 degrees. So we know that one period, which refers to one cycle, is 180 degrees. Now let's go back to this question. The range in this question was given to be negative 90 to 270. So this range from negative 90 to 270 is actually a range of 360 degrees. That means to say, for in order to sketch this out, we will end up be having two periods. Okay, we will end up be having two periods. By having two periods, we are referring to it as two cycles or two repeated curves of the same thing. So once we have established that, we can then start to do out our curve sketching. So um, we will start off by drawing the coordinates axis. So in this case, your x and y coordinates of it will look something like this. Take note that for your coordinates axis to when you draw a coordinate axis, because the range involves a negative x, so it'd be good if you can leave some um, negative x range like this. Next, we can then plug in the max, minimum, and center. So the max, minimum, and center will look something like this. Your x axis is when y equals to 0. Your center over here, all right, this is the center, is a 1. It should be above the x axis. So this one, you do it in faint dotted lines in pencil so that you do not confuse um, whoever that's reading your um, or marking your math math answers and this is considered your maximum so maximum is a 4 so leave some space so it should be equal distance from here to here to your minimum from center to maximum must be equal distance from minimum to center in order for it to be a slightly more accurate diagram or curve 
So minimum in this case is a negative two, so it's well below the x-axis. All right, it's well below the x-axis like this. So once you are able to establish this out, the next step in doing so is to plug in the points. Now take note that for a minimum curve, for a negative cosine curve, I mean, for a negative cosine curve, it starts with the minimum. So let's first start off with the minimum. So the minimum happens when it's negative two. All right, so let's start off with the minimum like this. So this is the minimum in this case. So we start with a minimum like this, 0, comma, negative 2 at 0 degrees when x is 0 degrees, y is negative 2. So we know that there is, this is a two periods diagram. So at the end of the first period, it will be 180 degrees. So at the end of the first period, it will end off with the minimum like this. So let's plug in another minimum point, which is here. So at the end of the first period, which is at 180 degrees, you will still go back to the minimum. Now, in between the two minimums we have in the middle to be the maximum here. So to be the maximum. So let's plug in the maximum. Maximum happens in between 0 and 180, which is 90 degrees. And it happens at 4, so which is somewhere here. So let's plug in the points here. So we have these three things, which is the minimum, maximum, and the minimum. So what is in between the 0 and 90 degrees, we will have it on the center like this. So in between 0 and 90 is at 45, it happens at the center of 1. So that is your in-betweens, 45 comma 1. So as you can see here, 0, 45, 90. What is in between 90 to 180, that's actually at 135, it will still happen on the, it will still be plotted on the center. So 135 degrees comma 1, you end up be here. So once we have this thing, take note, let's, let's recall this question a little bit here. We need to sketch all the way to 270 degrees. So in order for us to sketch all the way to 270 degrees, let's us finish, let us finish up the positive x values first. So over here, all the way to 270, that means to say I will have another 90 degrees to fulfill. Another 90 degrees to fulfill, it will just be a z replica of these three points. So the next point from here, as you can see, as you can visualize, it goes up to, it goes up to the center. So like this. So another 45, it goes up to the center, and then it goes back. As just replicate this, so it goes back all the way to the maximum like this, which is after 225 plus 45 will be 270, four. That is your coordinates. So as you can see here, you have one period like this, and half a period like this. Now that's not the end. Let's not forget that the range requiring the questions stretches all the way to negative 90 degrees. For it to be a negative 90 degrees, let's take a look at the negative, negative part of it. So as you can see here, the only way forward is to sketch in this direction. So over here, so every quadrant here is a 45 degrees. So we go back to the negative axis, then the negative x values, I mean. So in this case, will be a negative 45 comma 1. So negative 45 comma 1 will look something like this. And of course, the last value to plot would therefore be a negative 90 comma 4. And then we will have the, uh, we can then sketch out the whole curve like this. So what happens is this, is that when you are ending off this question, it will be good if you can do what? Make sure you actually answer this part, two periods. So let's find out. So this is one period ending here and a second period ending here. And so this sketch is perfect. And that's the answer for this question.